liver is the second largest organ in the human body, and it is responsible for many important functions. Some of these functions include bile production and excretion, detoxification of harmful substances, including drugs, toxins, and alcohol, metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, synthesis of plasma proteins, including albumin, globulins, and blood clotting factors, enzyme activation, removal of ammonia from the body through the urea cycle, and storage of glycogen, vitamins, and minerals. In liver disease, these functions get impaired, giving rise to a multitude of signs and symptoms. So in this video, we are going to look at six signs of liver disease and the pathological basis of those signs. Jaundice. Jaundice is the yellowish discoloration of skin and mucous membranes. The main substance responsible for this discoloration is bilirubin. Bilirubin is a waste product of hemoglobin breakdown, which takes place within the spleen. This bilirubin is taken up by the liver and it modifies it to form conjugated bilirubin, which is then excreted in bile. However, in liver disease, the liver is unable to conjugate bilirubin, which leads to its accumulation in blood. Excess bilirubin can deposit in various tissues in the body, including the skin, eyes, and other mucous membranes. Fluid retention. As already mentioned, liver is responsible for the synthesis of plasma proteins. The major plasma protein in blood is albumin, which maintains the oncotic pressure in blood. In other words, albumin retains water within the blood vessels and contributes to maintain a stable hemodynamic status. However, in liver disease, the synthesis of albumin is reduced. This leads to extravasation of water from capillaries into the interstitial space, causing signs such as leg swelling and ascites. Excessive bleeding. Blood clotting factors are essential for preventing spontaneous bleeds and excessive bleeding after an injury. They are synthesized by the liver. As the liver fails, the synthesis of these clotting factors will be reduced, leading to excessive bleeding. Hemethemesis and bleeding per rectum. As many of us know, liver has a dual blood supply. One is from the hepatic artery, which supplies oxygenated blood to the liver, and the other one is from the portal vein which supplies nutrient-rich blood from the small intestine. As the liver gets fibrosed in advanced liver disease, the blood must be pumped to the liver against an extra resistance, especially in the portal venous system. This is called portal hypertension. Due to portal hypertension, the venous plexus located in the esophagus and the rectum can enlarge, which are referred to esophageal and rectal varices respectively. These varices can rupture and can bleed extensively, causing hematemesis and bleeding per rectum, splenomegaly, or enlargement of the spleen. Spleen is also connected to the liver via the portal vein. Due to portal hypertension, blood backs up to the spleen as well, causing it to be swollen and enlarged. Encephalopathy. When liver fails to detoxify substances such as ammonia, they build up in the blood and cross over to the brain. This is called hepatic encephalopathy. Encephalopathy is characterized by reduced alertness, shortened attention span, disruptions in sleep pattern, mild confusion, slowing of the ability to perform mental tasks, and mood or personality changes.